Hey guys, welcome back to All About ABA. Today we're gonna make a different type of video. It's gonna be a graphing tutorial. So today I'm gonna teach you how to make a line graph using Excel, um, and we're gonna start right now. So, and it's also gonna be APA formatted. So if you're in grad school, you know, this is a type of uh, graph you're gonna wanna make when you're submitting assignments. Okay, so first we're gonna open Excel, which I did here. And then we're going to put input the data. So today I'm going to make my first column observations. You can also make this um, anything you want that makes sense. So this is going to be your X axis on your X axis. So you can make a date, sessions, anything that makes sense for what you are going to do. Okay, so let's do, we had, let's say observation one, two, and three. Okay, and then the second column, column B, you're gonna put the actual data that you put in, the stuff that's gonna go on the y-axis. So, for example, I could put in frequency Um, and then I could name it frequency of elopement or something. So today I'll, for this video, the, pur the purpose of this video, I'm just going to make the behavior today elopement so I can put frequency of elopement here. And then, um, I'm going to input my data for these observations that are here. And, uh, because this is not real data, I'm just going to kind of make some up here. So. My first observation, let's say I had seven instances of elopement, second one, let's say nine, and then third one, let's say 12, just for fun. Okay, so now, and then, you know, if you have more, obviously just keep going until you have inputted everything. Okay, and remember that this too can be anything that makes sense to you. So it could be rate per minute, it could be duration, it could be percent per opportunity, anything that makes sense, whatever dimension um, of uh, measurement you collected. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, excuse me, my cat just dropped something off the table. <laughs> okay, so, oops, I zoomed in a little bit. So what we're gonna do is highlight the data here. So we're gonna highlight B two through four because that's where our data is. And then we're gonna go up to insert all the way over to charts. Here are the charts here. And I'm gonna go to line because we're making a line graph. And I'm just gonna click line. Okay, so now it just generated uh, a chart here. And so, I'm sorry if you hear background noise, it's my cat, she's all up in my desk right now. Okay, anyway, we have our chart here, and it definitely is not an APA format right now, so we're gonna have to adjust it. Okay, and I'm gonna drag it out to be a little more big. So, now, let's see, we're going to, first we can remove the grid lines, so you can highlight them, like this, you see how they're all highlighted? I'm gonna right click and just click delete because we do not need those. And then also we need to make this data path black and white um, because APA formatted graphs are black and white. So what I did was just click on the data point and then you get the format data series chart here. And so I'm gonna go to this bucket and then it says line here. And then I'm going to click color, which is down here in this bucket, and I'm going to click black. Uh, okay, and then that changed the line color. Now we're going to make sure our markers are going to stay black too. So we're going to go to marker here, and you see how it's still blue. So if I made these bigger, they would turn, turn out blue, which is not good. So we are going to make sure the board, so this says border of the marker. We, we need to change that. We're going to go to black. We're also gonna to go to fill, which is actually the bigger part of it. So we need to change that too. So we'll make that black as well. Okay, and now we also want to 
change the size of the markers so that we can see them because right now we can't see any of them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to click on those, go back to the bucket, go back to marker. Okay, and then we're going to go down here to marker options, and then we're going to go to built in. And then we're going to make this bigger. I'm going to go, I was taught um, in grad school to make them around eight. So you can make seven, eight, probably between seven to nine. I wouldn't go any bigger than nine. I think eight is probably a good one because if you make them too big or too small, it's never good. You, if they're too small, you're not going to be able to see the data points. And if you make them too big, then they're going to be kind of distracting. Oops, of course I get an update here. Okay, so now I can also show you how to change the shape of these things. So we're gonna click them. And they're, make sure they're all highlighted. You see how all three of them are highlighted? If they're not, you're only gonna be changing one at a time, which uh, wouldn't be good if you forgot to make all of them the same. So we'll just make sure they're all highlighted. Go back to marker, go back to marker options. And then it says type here. And that's above the size anyway, so you can just do this at the same time when you do it. So it's a square, and I can change it to whatever I want. So I'll just change it to a, a cute little boring circle. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our pretty data path and our pretty markers, we are going to change the title. So the titles here, you can just click on that. And I'm gonna um, name it something that is a brief description of what it is. So I'm just gonna type in frequency of elopement. And you can even make it just frequency if you want to and make it um, more simple because we're really gonna make a um, more detailed description in the figure caption, which is required in APA formatting. But you can do frequency of elopement, duration of tantrum, um, rate of aggression per hour, you know, whatever you want to do, anything that makes sense to you. Just nothing too long because uh, it's just an abbreviated description. Okay, so now we are going to need our Y and X axis labels. So what you're going to do is go to add chart element up here in the left corner. We're going to go to axis titles. We're going to do primary horizontal. And so this one, I'm just going to type in consecutive observations. There we go. Okay. And then if you need to, you can go to text options. And you can change the font and stuff if you want to. Where is that? Yes. Um, you can change the color. There we go. It's actually going to be, I think, up here. Or font. Here we go. So actually highlight it, right click, and then you can go to font, and then you can change the size. So I'm going to go to to 12, which is here. Excuse my My animals are definitely wanting to make themselves known in this video today. <laughs> OK, so I changed the font size to 12 there. Okay, and then I have my x-axis title, and so now I need my y-axis title, so I'm going to click the chart again, um, and then I'm going to go to add chart elements, again, axis titles, primary vertical. Okay, and then I'm going to type in here, and we're going to go frequency. Okay. And I can make it like frequency of responses or just frequency, whatever makes sense to you and what, what you're trying to represent. So duration, um, percent of opportunity, whatever you want. Okay. And then also making sure that you have enough room. You don't want, you know, your titles to be right at the edge of it. So you can always drag it, click it, and drag it bigger like this and kind of move things around the way you want them. Okay, I'm going to move this a little bit. 
Okay. Now it's cute. We got, and then also I'm going to change this font before I forget. So we're going to right click, go to font. We're going to go to 12. Okay. There we are. Okay. So now we're going to add in the last element we need. So we're going to add in our figure caption. So we need to make sure there's enough room at the bottom. And also just so you know, you don't have to add your figure caption in Excel. You can add it into Microsoft Word below um, the image of your graph if you want, but you can also do it in Excel. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in Excel. If you wanted to, you could just end here and then put your graph in Word and put the figure, cap or figure caption at the bottom, um, just so you know. But I'm gonna show you now. So it's gonna go below your x-axis title. So you gotta make sure there's enough room at the bottom. So I'm going to click it, drag this down, okay, which we still don't have enough room. And actually what you can do too is do the plot area and make that smaller. There we go. And then kind of adjust things a little bit. And then I probably still need more room, so I'm going to keep doing that and adjusting until I have enough room for both the x-axis title and the figure caption, which I do now. Okay, so what we're gonna do to add the figure caption is we are going to go to insert text box. And then we're gonna add it at the bottom here and I'm gonna move it after I type it in, but or I can move it now too. Move it here. And then we can type in figure one. And then I'm gonna give a more detailed description than the title of the graph. So I'll write in frequency of elopement for a five-year-old girl with ASD. Okay, and then you can add that here and go in the middle. Okay, so there you go. Now you have all the elements you're going to need. Okay, so now we're ready to go to Word. Okay, so what we're going to do is you can, I'm going to give you two options here. You can either screenshot this, which if you have a Mac, you know, control, I think it's control shift four or something like that. You can use the grab app on a Mac too. Um, PC users, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to screenshot, but I'm sure there's a way so you could screenshot it or you can save this as a photo. You, the, you can copy and paste it but if you copied and pasted into Word, you're gonna have to, it's gonna mess up your formatting and you're just gonna adjust everything. It's really annoying. So I do not suggest doing that. I suggest either taking a screenshot or saving it as an image and then inserting it. So you can screenshot it. So let's pretend I did that. So that's one option. And the other option that I'm gonna show you is saving as a photo. So what you're gonna do is right click and then you're gonna go down to save as picture. And so now I'm just going to name it, so I'll go graph one. And then I'm going to choose where. So I'm going to choose my desktop. And then I'm going to click save. Okay. And now we're ready to put it in Word. So I have a Word here open. So I'll make that full screen here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to insert pictures, picture from file. Here's my graph, bam. All right, here you go. So now you made it. You inserted it into your APA formatted paper. You got an APA formatted graph. You're good to go. Um, and that will do it. Good luck on your graphing. And I'll see you in the outro. All right, guys, so that is it for today's graphing tutorial video. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see more content like this. 
Are there any more graphing related videos that you would like to see or any other Excel or Microsoft type videos you want to see? Let me know. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe so you can see more ABA content like this and give us a big thumbs up for more. And you can always follow us on Instagram at all.about.aba for good ABA memes, some trivia, some terms, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay on your best or worst behavior.